So regardless of the images that we've seen that have matched all these things up, uh, we now see that um, there's some clarity behind the scientific part of this stuff. And we can also see there's some clarity behind the, uh, the association of what we call cosmic electricity and what we even see when, we point, when they point us to Kundalini and they've already pointed those two and associated those two together and we can see that the path of electricity with a fohat or cosmic electricity seems to be the same as what we see with Kundalini. There's also the metaphysical side of this that goes beyond the scientific and uh, the scientific guys uh, are going to have to eventually they're going to have to begin to, to push beyond the boundary of just the scientific everything is dead and materialistic everything is mechanical they're going to have to begin to push beyond that hopefully some of this stuff that I've been bringing out will begin to help them do that a little bit because as we've seen um, for example Michelangelo painting the brain and and the brain being this area that sits outside of the solar system just like the esoteric uh, text described uh, and him painting the Orion Nebula and the Orion Nebula being the image of a human brain and all of the Kundalini images and all these things that we see matching up to all of this stuff cosmically as well as what we see in man himself we can't can't be denied I mean it can be denied but not uh, not with integrity it can't be denied because what we see is we see these particular images and they are all backed up by what we see in the esoteric texts so although some people might have thought I was crazy a long time ago by showing that the Orion Nebula was a brain in fact uh, what we see in these esoteric texts is exactly that and this was the area that was being pointed to this particular thing with the eye and the triangle. I want to point out something that's really important here. You know, the mainstream guys out there, the guys that are afraid of everything, you know, like Mark Dice, for example, every one of his videos that he comes out with in the title of it, it has the word Illuminati in it, okay? And after a while, you kind of get tired of seeing this whole thing with Illuminati. What I've learned over my time of looking at this stuff is that there appears to be some some group of people some faction that has been trying to scare us away from the very symbolism that you're looking at right now they appear to be for whatever reason trying to scare us away from these things so we won't go look at it ourselves so what do they try to scare us from they tried to scare us from the swastika and where is the swastika on this cosmic Buddha it's right where the heart is, and this represents the sun. And you see this other vortex up here in his head? That vortex up here in his head represents the pineal gland, and this is a cosmic representation of the same thing that I showed you earlier. So we see these two areas right here. This is the point, and this right here powers our sun. Our sun powers the solar system. So when we see this image right here, we see the same swirl that you saw on Buddha's head. This area right here which corresponds to the trapezium of the Orion Nebula, we know why. Let's take a look at this read real quick. The group of wedges which we read, Asari is um, minus equal I. This is the uh, actual cuneiform character text here. The first is the well-known meaning of tent, which is what we see right here, or dwelling or resting place, and the second has the meaning of I and is placed inside the sign for tent, which is what we see right here. The two signs by which these are transcribed in Egyptian are a seat or throne and an eye. Now the sign is followed in the text by two other cuneiform characters. These form a title of Asari and are read in Sumerian, Ludug, and they mean good man or being. Thus we have a uh, Asari, which uh, the good being, but we find in the Egyptian text that one of the principal titles of Osiris is in Nefer, that is, good being. And it seems clear that this is the title of the Egyptian translation of the cuneiform characters meaning good man or being that there is little doubt that the Egyptian Asar which is Osiris is the equivalent of the Babylonian Asari. Now this was translated by E.A. Wallace Budge he lived from 1857 to 1934 and he is the main guy who began to decipher much of the Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs and if you see right here the trapezium of the Orion Nebula which is our central invisible sun has the same slopes as the pyramid 
The reason the capstones was were missing on the Great Pyramids, they were trying to show us a couple of things. They were trying to show us um, the area, the location, because the pyramids are structured in the in the form of Orion, the, the belt stars of Orion. But the missing capstone, what they were trying to show us was they were trying to show us the apex of the pyramid of creation, which is this area right here. This is where that man came into being. Now, interestingly, the also the other things that we see for Osiris. Let me just show you this real quick. This is a Cyrus hat, and we can see here in this old uh, carving right here, notice where that hat is and where this little sun is right above the two ears because that is where the pineal gland is located. So Osiris, the eye of Osiris and Osiris is representing the pineal gland. You can see this little hat, the way it comes in and pinches right here. It's also what we see if we take a look inside the x-ray of a skull as well. The same kind of thing occurs with the little ball sitting on top of it right where the pineal gland is located. There is, this is significant because the eye of Osiris, that triangle surrounding the eye, which that eye is some kind of a vortex, when we actually take a look at the Orion Nebula itself, the triangular area is also the same area that we take a look at if we're looking at a sagittal view of the brain. It's also the same thing as the uh, as the pineal gland area of the brain. So here's another one where we took the same thing, and, I, and this is the uh, uh, this is Solomon's Temple right here, and it plugs right in, as you can see, and the uh, these ancient temples were designed after man and but they were designed after man not just because it was just man they were looking at they were also looking at the cosmos as well because those Egyptian pyramids of Giza those Giza pyramids they were actually pointing us to our invisible central Sun that's what they were pointing us to and that's what Osiris was representing remember it says in the pyramid text that the construction of the pyramids is Osiris that's the reason why we see them in the same slope of the pyramids, representing the same slope as the trapezium of the Orion Nebula, the same area that powers our sun. But the deal is, is that in all of this, uh, what we see is that these certain factions out there have tried to scare us uh, from looking at this. I hope that, that this helps people understand that these symbols, the Illuminati has nothing to do with. The Illuminati is some huge imaginary bucket that we throw everybody into that is that is in a high power uh, and is not uh, out for any good in this world. And then what they do is they try to associate these, the symbolism to the Illuminati, but there is no a real Illuminati group or what have you. And these symbols that they associate to that imaginary group of bad people that really do exist, these all these bad people that are out there, they're not members of any group called the Illuminati. That is some all that is some kind of a bucket that they throw everybody into that they don't like. But the problem with it is, is then they begin to take these ancient symbols and associate that to these people. It's a complete mind fuck. And what it does is it causes people to uh, to associate these symbols like the swastika that we see on the Buddha and stuff like that and so that what that does is that when this is a uh, it is a psyop so that when people see things like this the they get fear that runs through their body rather than exploration that runs through their body and then they don't find the they, they don't want to find out what's really behind all the symbolism. They just immediately think Illuminati, bad person, fear, and stuff like this, and then they forget about everything else that goes along with it. But if they would look into the ancient symbolism, but see, people just don't normally do this. Uh, the average public, they just don't normally go out and look for stuff like this. But when they do, they find out that this ancient symbolism, all of this symbolism is extremely important. And by looking at the symbolism and by looking at the art, and stuff like this that we find in all these places, we get to the truth. But they knew this. See, whoever's trying to keep us from the truth, they knew this. So what's the easiest way to keep people from the truth and keep people from exploring stuff like this? Scare the hell out of them with it. If you don't want people to look at stuff, you hang hell over their heads and you scare the hell out of them and you tell them not to look at stuff. Because if you look at stuff, you know, the boogeyman's going to get you. And so it works. It's worked for centuries. And so people, now we have the mainstream out there, and we have Mark Dice, and we have all these other 
uh, stations out there, all these other channels out there, that they flash the uh, triangle with the eye in it and they make it seem like it's something bad when in fact it's probably one of the most important symbols we could imagine. Let me show you something real quick. We know that this right here refers to Osiris, it refers to the central sun. Well, let me show you a piece of art right here. This is called Supper at uh, Amos Pontormo, and this was done in 1525, a good, what, 80 years before the King James Bible was published. And here's Jesus, right under the eye with the triangle. So does this mean that Jesus was an Illuminati? Uh, does this mean he was uh, an Illuminati, uh, Freemason, you know, all this other kind of stuff that they've come out with? And by Freemasons, by the way, have put out all kinds of good information, and they're just another thing demonized by the church. I suspect that it is mostly some faction in the church that's trying to keep this stuff uh, from coming out to people. I don't know why. I can't figure it out why. But I can tell you that like all these things that I've found in these cathedrals and stuff, they weren't supposed to be... Uh, they, did these, they did this art in such a way that the church wouldn't catch it. And, but they knew that eventually someone would figure it out. So what they did was they put it all over the churches, like these, like Michelangelo's painting, and like what we see in the Mother Jesuit Church and stuff like this. But just like anything else, folks, uh, we can't just say, "Oh, well, if it's in the church, then that must mean that it's something bad." No, folks, you have to you have to investigate, you have to explore, you have to say, "Well, this is interesting. Look at this piece of information I have." And then you have to go out there and you have to start looking in other places and seeing if there are different things that are connecting the dots. That means going to ancient texts. That means looking at symbolism. That means especially going across culture, looking at the very te various texts and stuff like that. And when you do that, it doesn't matter whether that first person you think was bad or not, whether the church was not, all the other data out there that's inside, that's, that's whether it be the ancient texts or whether it be the pyramids or ancient Egypt or uh, whether it be the, the Buddha or whether it be all these other places that you look, they will confirm or deny what you've seen and the importance of it. That's why it takes good investigation. So you can't just say, oh, well, you can't trust what that guy said. He was a Freemason or he was a Jesuit or he was a Jew or he was a, you know, because you can put, you can do that with everything. And if you do that with everything like that, if you, you can always take somebody and what they are and whether they are, uh, what, what a membership they were with or whatever, and you can just knock it down to where you'll never look at anything because every time you look at somebody, they're always a member of something that you think is not right. So the, the only way that you can do it is you have, to, you have to begin to take a look at the information and then start confirming across culture. That's the only way you really find the truth in all of this stuff. So does this mean Jesus was an Illuminati uh, bad guy who was trying to rule the world? No, it doesn't. But no one's going to look at this. First person that sees this normally in the mainstream is going to go, Oh my God, I can't believe that they painted a Jesus with an Illuminati symbol on top of him. But that's the mainstream, folks. But we're above the mainstream, right? We realize that there are deeper meanings behind this. Some of these meanings are extremely metaphysical. Some of these meanings have layers of meanings when it comes to the symbolism. But the mainstream hype that's been put out there to scare everybody from this stuff, that's not what we're interested in. That's all mainstream hype. And so although Mark Dice can put out uh, stuff like Illuminati in every single one of his videos in the title, and that may grab the mainstream common man, people that can look beyond that and understand the symbolism for what it is, both cosmically and what we see it in man as well, we know better. But it's time to start. It's time to stop being afraid of all this stuff and start digging into the esoteric information of what it all really means. We can clearly see people have been hiding stuff from us for a long time, and they've been doing it with fear. Scare the hell out of people, and they won't look at it. Scare the hell out of people, and they won't go explore. Hang hell over their heads, and they won't go explore. That seems to be what the church has been doing. But the church has been found out in a lot of ways. So what do we see here? Well, we already know that this represents the eye of Osiris, but we also know that this is a vortex. It's also the trapezium of the Orion Nebula. There are different understandings of Jesus and Christ and things like this. 
So we see Jesus standing under Osiris. Well, we know this is the same thing as Jehovah as well. And when you start looking around in all these cultures and stuff, you start finding out that all of these various things are usually talking about the same thing, just like Osiris is the same as Jehovah. So anyways, I want to thank you guys for the subscriber that I recently got for 20,000 subscribers. Um, the scientific stuff is now um, going to start becoming important in all of this as well, because the scientific, I hope, will start getting the attention of the folks like the Thunderbolts projects and stuff like that. But also, my hope is at the same time that we will begin to start seeing the metaphysical that also exists in all of this as well, rather than just the material, mechanical part of all this. So, um, And stop being afraid of all the symbolism. This symbolism is where the truth lies. And those people that have tried to keep us afraid of it have done that so we wouldn't get to the truth. So you guys take care, and thanks a lot again. Talk to you soon.